Okay, so today is September the 3rd, and yes, I'm starting with recording and recording the, the actual quiz itself. Now, if you weren't here, I am begging you to, I'm going to give you a pass later, to come in the morning, as soon as you get done with breakfast or whatever, and come make it up, okay? Just kind of watch, um, but but for the, for the rest of you, you all have gotten it back. So I want you to see your mistakes, okay? So let's start out. Here we go with number one. Um, so looking at your paper, I need you to see, did you copy it right? Um, when you copy point two, it has to be written like that, guys. It cannot be like point zero two. You can't choose where to put the decimal or anything. It is adding. Um, Lining up that decimal and bringing it straight down with adding. Has to be straight up and down, brought straight down. Okay. Um, looking at number two, if you missed that one. Lots of kids got one right. Two was questionable. When copying number two, that one has to be on that side of the decimal, guys. You cannot change it. Now, you could put this on top, but it has to be lined up this way. Please stop. Okay, so noticing. So these are the two adding ones. My question to you is, do you see what you missed, missed or messed up? Okay, so adding, do we know how to fix it for next time? You got what? Decimal wrong. And listen, decimal wrong is still wrong. So that's why I'm asking, like, do you now know what to do, though? Like, is it better? Okay, then what is, what, what's your question then? On what? Lining it up. Okay, so whatever they give you first, copy it the same way it is. You can even put that zero in front if you want. That doesn't matter. Then lining up the second number right below it. But these decimals have to stay in a straight line. You can't move anything around. And then add it straight up, straight up and down, even if you need to add zeros in the holes. Like that would have been carried one. Does that help a little bit? Like you have to just line them up the way they are. I'm going to be honest, this week we are going to continue to practice add and subtract and multiply. We are going to add division, but there's going to be a lot of, I'm going to be checking behind a lot of you and seeing how you're doing on add and subtract. Yes? What do you mean We're going to also be doing division, sorry, division of decimals. Yes. Adding division to our, yeah, algorithms. Okay, on number three. The one thing that happened with a lot of you on number three is you flip-flop the numbers. Listen, that means 14.6, which is like $14.60. 14 is bigger than 34 cents. And we talked about that with subtraction, 14.6, whatever's first, has to be on top. Whatever is second has to be on bottom with subtraction. There is, you cannot flip-flop it, flip-flop it with subtraction. Then, going in here, add a zero. Borrow if you need to. Okay, mm-hmm. Three and the four, yes. A lot of you guys just copied it wrong, like you put 3.4 or scooted it over and put 3.4 point. But you have to copy these numbers the same way they are on the paper. Okay. Well, decimals and subtraction, line up, bring straight down. Okay. Number four. That is a whole number. Guys, think about money. When you look at number four, think about that six is six dollars. 
and how you write it. You write it as 6.0 or 6.00 if you want to write it like regular dollars. That is 70 cents. That's not $7. It does not go on top. It is 70 cents or 0.7, 7 tenths. It, that is the only way you can line up subtraction. Whatever's first on top, whatever's second on bottom. Then, you don't really have to have that zero, but five point three is the answer. Five point three zero. Okay. Any questions about subtraction? Most of you just flip flopped it. What worries me is this. I had some helpful hints up there on the board Friday. One was, did you line up your decimals on add and subtract? One was, did you line up your numbers? Did you bounce it to the left with multiplication? And some of you didn't look at any of the helpful hints. I, you know, I need you to help yourselves at this point. Yes? Add instead of subtracted. That was a big one. That was a big one. Um, a lot of people just put the 7 on top of the 6 and gave me like the answer was 1.0. But you can't move that decimal, and it's got to stay lined up then. Mm -hmm. I got number seven wrong. I'm getting there. I'm sure you can tell. Yes. Oh, you know what? I bet you thought it was here. Did ten minus seven is three, but then put a nine right there. Yep. Okay. Hint on multiplying. With multiplying, the steps of multiplying are no different. If you will look up here, you might figure something different out that helps you. If you write that as just 53, and you write that as just 87, so kind of ignoring the decimals for just a minute, do the regular math. Okay, so your numbers would be 4611. Now, if I go back into this problem and I think about the actual decimals, there is one number, two numbers behind the decimals. So that means down here in my answer, I need to bring it over twice, meaning my answer is 46.11. The key is bring it to the left with multiplication. That way, to the left. Okay. Um, this last one, if you want to put 367 on top and 4 and just ignore the decimal, you can do it that way. Okay, even if you want to go back in here and go, okay, I got my numbers now. Now I'm going to put my decimal. Well, where's the decimal in four? In front of the, yeah, in front of the, behind it. Behind it. It is after it. So, how many numbers are behind decimals? One, two, Three. just two. There is two numbers behind decimals. One, two. Does that make sense? So, if I scoot it over twice, that means my decimal has to be right there, 14.68. It's interesting to me because I'm going over this and some people won't even look up here while I go over the problems. And it, I mean, there's nothing, I, I mean, I'm trying, that's all I can say. Okay, looking at number seven at the word problems. On number seven, it says that there's this checking account and it has $251.55. Find the new balance after she pays $29.95 for a shirt. Now, when you pay for something, I don't care if it's a checking account, a savings account, or your pocket, that money is going out. It's going away from you. So it's being subtracted. Does that make sense? So, like, she starts with $251. 0.55 and then she takes away 
29.95. So, she has left $221.60. Now, I'll admit a couple things. I graded this so fast I didn't even look for words. I kind of just forgot, to be honest. Um, if you had no words, I should have taken off another point. Make sure that you do that this Friday. So if you didn't put a word or words or a sentence, I totally forgot to even check for it. I was just dying to get these things graded and back to y'all today, so I was rushing. Yes? I got it wrong because I forgot to change the one to a two. Are you saying in the front here you made it a one? No. That one. That one? That one? Yeah, that one. You made it a one or you made it a two? I made it a one. A one. Okay. Okay. I did broke down the sentence. Okay. Okay. Yes. Decimal in the wrong place, that, yes. Isn't that like the most important thing? Yeah, because, I mean, listen, if this is your bank account, bank account. listen, yeah, if you move the decimal over one spot, you got $22. Mm -hmm. You want the bank to get your decimal point correct, and that's the whole thing with decimals is I have to be that picky. Now, the one thing that gets me is that there's one kid that I teach that checked every problem. So, this is what the child did. They took the answer. They took the number on the bottom. They added them up. And they got... Um, Oops, I did that. 9, 10, 11. I need you to quit making comments under your breath, please. If you have something to ask, that's fine. Raise your hand, but let's stop. Do I need to call your name on the video? Okay, then don't. said, um, in fact, the child who did this checking actually did what I did and made a zero right there and couldn't figure out why their math was wrong. I didn't mind. Like, they came up to me and they're like, Miss Donnie, I'm trying to check this thing. And my check, and all it was was the checking was wrong. It wasn't the problem here. It was that part. Listen, if you'll go through and check everyone, we can work on it. But You've got to put in some effort on it and check them, like especially subtraction, especially. Okay, on the next one, it is a race and the word difference is being used. Now, with a difference, you want to do subtraction and you want your largest number on top. 30 is larger than 22. Some of you even lined this up right and then just didn't borrow right. Um, And it is 7.6, 7.6 minutes. Okay, but once again, if you would just check it, add it up. You would see that your math is right or wrong. You want to do that, guys. Stick up for your grades. Listen, I am not wanting to give anyone a bad grade. But I can't make you, like, slow down. And I might make you slow down and, and check every problem this week or so. I think some of you would make a little bit better grade at this point. Okay, as for these two questions, there will be more of these on Friday. So let's look at it, okay? On this question, the 7 right here, it is in the hundredths column. 
with a THS. That first zero is the tenths, then the hundredths, then it would be the thousandths. Okay, the value is 0 0.07, or you can put a zero there, or you can put zeros in the front. Either and all is fine. Okay, yes? Okay, give me just a second. I'll come over there. And then place on this one is the, y'all can say it, tens. It's okay. So its value is 10. And if you put like 10.0 or I had some kids who did that, that's fine. That does not bother me. Yes? Uh-huh. they call a terminating decimal. If you think about the word terminate or the word like I think of the movie like Terminator or whatever, it's, it's ending. It is stopping. In fact, it is a decimal that ends. It, like when we get to the remainder, it's going to be a remainder of zero. It's going to end. It's going to stop and be just nice and done. Okay? does not end nice and pretty. Um, then we have to decide, is this thing ever going to end, or is it going to repeat, um, or terminate, as they call it. So, 
Okay, so two definitions. Here we go. Going on down with dividing decimals. Now, it's easy. It's, it's really not that hard, but here we go. Starting out, the very first thing you've got to think about is what to put in the house. Notice this. It tells you the directions on how to do this. Number one, the first number goes inside. What they mean by that is in the house, which we did this back when we did division. This 46.32 has got to go in the house, and 0.4 or 0 0.4 needs to go outside. It is the divisor. Okay. We can't really say anymore a short number, long number, or anything like that. take 0.4 or 4 tenths and make it a whole number. Well, if I move it one time to the right, that makes it a whole number. Okay, and I'm moving it to the right. Notice that. To the right. Okay. Now, if I move it once to the right in the divisor, I have to move it once to the right in the dividend. Okay. Next step is raise the decimal to the roof, meaning I call it put it up here in the quotient, put it in the answer. So if you have moved it like once here, you've got to move it once here. If you move it three times, you've got to move it three times. Okay. Good so far? Okay. Now the division itself, nothing is different. Just do one number at a time. Can four go into four? Yes. Yes. One down. Kind of slide that over, bring down the six. Four into six? Yes. Once. Dividing with decimals is hard. It's no different. Now, four into 23? Yes. How many times? Five. Five. And four times what's 32? Eight. Now, this one is a terminating decimal. It ended. I didn't even have to add a zero. My answer is right there. But I didn't have to add a zero. There's no remainder. It is pretty. Okay. We're good on that. Uh, you should be copying this with me. I'm going to number one now, down here on the examples. So, which number goes in the house? Yes, point four ninety six. And outside is the one point two. How many times do we need to move it in the divisor? Once. Once. Yes. We're going to move it and make it a 12. Well, if we move it one time out in the divisor, we got to move it one time in the dividend. Bring it straight up to the quotient. Bring it on up to that answer box. Now, can 12 go into 4? No. No. 
Can 12 go into 49? Yes. How many times? Four. Four. 12 times 4 is 48. 48. Now be very careful. If you'll notice with the way I'm lining this up, that 4 has got to go to the right of the decimal. Be super careful with that. Okay, bring down the 6. Can 12 go into 16? Yes. <coughs> One time. Okay, and I'm stopping there for just a second. Okay, now. You move the decimals and the division is the same until now. Now, we are, when we have a remainder with this, we've either got to keep going till this thing ends or repeats or something. So, what we got to do is add one zero at a time. Just one. So, if I add a zero, I now have a 40. So, you want to just work with that. How many 12s are in 40? Three. three. 12 times 3 is 36. Four again. So if I add a zero, another zero, and what number is it going to be again? Forty. Forty, and it's going to be the three up here, right? Okay, so you keep getting the same thing. You now see a repeating decimal. But what number is repeating? Slow down. In the answer up top. The three, yes. The reason I'm asking that is the three is repeating. So what we do when we have a repeating number is we put a repeater bar on top of it. Just the repeating number. It's not four one repeating. It's four one three 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 forever. So just the three or the two threes get a repeater bar. You can have four threes as long as you put a repeater bar on all of them. Okay? So the repeating actual number or part of the answers up here. And you just leave down here the four just hanging out. Because if you're telling me this thing's never going to end by putting that bar up there. Does that help a little bit? Okay. Looking at the next one. Okay, I'm going to put 45 in the house. And four thousandths outside the house. Okay. Now, in the number 45, where's the decimal? At the end. At the end, yes. So it's kind of like right there right now. It's the whole thing with whole numbers. you got to know kind of where it begins in case you got to move it. Okay. How many times do we need to move this thing? Three times. Three times. Three. Look. you got to make it a whole number. One, two, three. To the right. So what that means is over here, I've got to move it three times to the right. So, if I put that decimal there and bring it up, yes, what do you think goes in these holes? Zeros. Zeros. I need a zero in each spot. Now, the one thing that's going to get some of you, you need up here in this quotient, you need numbers all the way across to that decimal. Even if, if you have to put zeros, like, you can't just stop in the middle of this thing. That decimal's like, you got to come all the way there. So, let's look at this thing. So, can 4 go into 4? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, one time, bring down the 5. Can 4 go into 5? Yes. One time. Bring down a 0. Can 4 go into 10? Yes. Two times. Can four go into twenty? Yes. Five times. 
16, now, this is what I'm talking about. We are not finished. We have to bring down the zero. Can four go into zero? No. How many fours are in zero? Zero. Zero. You have to have that zero there. That changes everything. Yes. You need to bring them all the way down so you run out of numbers or the decimal especially. This is, I mean, honestly, the math is the same with dividing. It's just bouncing the decimal to the right. Now, notice something. With multiplying, you're bouncing it to the left. With dividing, we're going to bounce it to the right. That's going to be, like, that's part of the memorization this week. Guys, you got to get memorized. Add and subtract. Line them up. Bring it straight down. Multiply goes this way. Divide goes this way. Yes. Yes, here we go. Yes. Is there a shorter way to do this? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Sorry. Now, when I do this division, especially this worksheet, I'm looking on number of patients. If I was you, I would get with me. Do as much as you can with me. Um, I would definitely try to get some done. So then it's doing that. Nope. We are doing the whole thing. She said we're not going to do that. I made it to like number four. Some of the classes I didn't. It really has mattered on behavior, discussion about the quizzes and things of that sort. I'm going to be doing my best to do some of these on this video. So even if you leave to go to the bus or something, maybe click on the video tonight. It might help you. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start out with number one here. And I'm going to do mine on notebook paper. I just, I like lines. Here we go. Okay. So this is seventh period. It is last work homework. It is a worksheet. Dividing decimals. Um, one through eleven. Today is the third. Okay. And you don't have to put all that. That's just for me. Okay, so number one. It is 3.4 into 12.92. So step one is getting the right number, what I call, in the house. That's going to be a biggie. Getting the right number in the house. Okay. Step two, how many times do we need to move the decimal? One. Once. Move the decimal one time. Move the decimal one time. And bring it on up. Okay. Steps of division. And if you need to cover it up like I'm doing, that's fine. Can 34 go into one? No. no. So I'm going to put a zero there. I'm going to go over what? You can put an X. It is fine. Can 34 go into 12? No. So can 34 go into 129? Yes. So I'm over here. I'm just thinking 34 times 4. And it's a guess, guys. I mean, I don't. I got 136. Be too big, wouldn't it? So I'm going to do times 3. I got 102. So which one should I use? 102. 102. So I'm going to put the 3 up here. 
the 102, and I got 27 left over. 27 is good. It is smaller than my divisor, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Bringing down a 2 now. Okay. So 34 times what? 6. six? I have no, I mean, I just, I'm guessing 18. I got 204. It's 8. 8. Two seventy-two, yes, eight would work, and eight makes it a terminating decimal, meaning that it ends. Now I'm going to leave all that scratch work, guys. You never know; another problem might be dividing by thirty-four. Just leave it there. I know why it's there; it's fine. Okay, going to number two. Number two is. 22.47 divided by 7. Where's the decimal in 7? Behind it. So do we need to move it around? No. No, but we do on the dividend side need to bring it straight up. Look, guys, don't like, I know we're not moving it to the right or anything. But you got to bring it up there. So, can 7 go into 2? Yes, no. no. 7 into 22? Yes. 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 Three times. Yes. 7 into 14? 22. 2. Bring down. The seven. Seven into seven? One. Another terminating decimal. It ends, it does not repeat. Nice little zero for remainder. That one wasn't too bad. There's actually a few like that on here that look long, but because they're dividing by just a single digit, they're not that bad. They kind of do. They make it easier. Um, on number three, here we go. It is, let's see. Okay, so 0.5 going into 0 0.025. One time, yes. Decimal move it one time. If I move it once divisor, got to move it once in the dividend, bring it straight up. Okay. Five into zero? Zero. Five into two? Zero. Five into 25? Five. Five. You have, like, the only answer I can take, guys, is 0 .05 or 0 0.05. You've got to have a number above each number in the div dividend. Okay. Going to number four. It is... 0 0.08 going in to 7.224. Okay. Here we go. So, on the outside, how many times do I need to move it over? Two. Two. So, if I move it twice out here in the divisor, just finish it. Okay, we're going to keep going. We're going to move it twice in the dividend. When moving it twice in the dividend, make sure you bring it up, guys, in your quotient. Up here in the answer, you can only have one decimal. One decimal. 
Here we go. Please quit making 5,000 comments. Please. Let the people concentrate that are around you. Thank you. Okay. Can 8 go into 7? No, just like it, there's, it's just one short. Okay. Can it go into 72? Yes. Eight times what? Three. Three. Now, seven, it's got to get all the way to 72. Eight times nine, nine is 72. Okay, slide it over. Bring down a two. Can 8 go into 2? No. no. 8 times 0 is 0. Slide it over. Bring down a 4. Can 8 go into 24? 3 times. Yes. This is why lining stuff up is so important. Um, a few, in the last few years, I've had some kids turn the notebook paper like this to do the problems so that they can keep everything lined up. That's fine. If it works for you, that's fine. Okay. Okay, we'll do number five now. On number five, let's see what we got. Let's try to see if there's any, how can I get a, an odd one? Here we go. 9.5 going into that. Okay. So, I need to move it how many times? One time. Move it one time and bring it up. Can 95 go into just 8? No. This is where you got to be careful with the X. Y'all asked about the X earlier. you got to have a number once you get to this side of the decimal. So can 95 go into 85? No. no we definitely need a zero now because now we're going to put a number. 95 times what? Nine. Nine? 81. That equals 4. So, 9 is 8.55. And it is ending. Okay. There is one more that I'd like to work, which is number 11. And I'm just, I'm going to work it. I've, I've been told it's kind of rough, but let's see what it's all about. Um, and I, let's see. There it is. Okay, on number 11, it says the two largest lizards in the United States are the Gila Monster and the Chukawala. I remember this one from last year. The average Gila monster is 0.608 meters long. The average Chukwala is 0.395 meters long. How many times as long is the Gila monster as the Chukwala to the nearest hundredth? How many times as long? So really what we're doing, we're going to divide, is the, the Gila monster in the house as the Chukawala outside the house. Okay, doing this on a whim, meaning in a hurry and all that good stuff, I'm probably incorrect, but I'm thinking. Let's see. Okay, so first, we got to move the decimal. How many times? Three. Three. I'm tired. I've been up. Please stop. Okay, so 395 can't go into six, 
can't go into 60. Well, even looking at 395 times 2, yeah, I was thinking it would be too much. So we're only going to be able to do one. So I got 213. Okay, so we got to add a zero. Bring it down. Now, think about that as almost 400. So there's about two 400s in 1,000. There'd be about four in 2,000. Um, well, I was thinking five. Let's see if we can get this. I mean, I don't, I don't know it off the top of my head. Can you help the people who have to go with this one? I'm hoping they're going to finish by watching the video. I got five right here. Um, six would be too much. So I'm going to go in here and put a five. It is now time for car riders to be dismissed. Car riders may be dismissed. I got 155. I'm going to add one more zero before I make a final decision on this thing or try to figure out if we should stop. You're fine. There we go. Two. That's two. Guys, all you can do is keep working with it. That's all you can do. You're trying to get as close as you can to 1,550. So I'm looking at these numbers. That one's not big enough yet, well, that I know of. So I'm going to try times four. So I'm up to four is too big. So I'm going to try a three. I'm going to have to use that. 1185. I got 365. It is now time for second round to be I'm dismissed. adding one second zero just to see. Dismissed. I'm just trying something. 395. I think nine is too big. I'm going to try eight. Eight times five is 40. Five people. Uh, let me try one more. Yeah, and that's the thing we got to talk about tomorrow for the whopping three or four or five kids that are in here. Um, some never end. Some of these problems will never end. Or they might keep going. Forever, never, never. Yeah, like, and there might be an ending ten steps later, but I'm not looking for ten steps later. Um, one second. Five, seven. No. Can you just Nine. No. Listen. Okay. So we're here. We got to 95. Definitely. Tomorrow, what I will talk about is this. And I promise I'll talk about it. If you have added three zeros, and I want you to kind of look, and you're still getting something that isn't working right, you kind of have two choices. Stop, meaning you know your math is real good. Nothing's repeating. Just stop there. Um, or you could go back and recheck it. What I did last year was if we had a never-ending problem, like if it never ended, I kind of told the kids, hey, put a star next to that one, and I want you to do it, and I'm going to check to see what numbers you get, but I realize it's never-ending. 
So when you add three zeros, you're done. And we will talk about that one tomorrow. Um, that kind of leaves the, everybody with six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five. That's five problems. Do you do them and then post nope. Yeah. Honestly, I have to go to Car Rider Line and pick up my kid today for the first time like in my life.